Hello everyone, it's Daryl. How are you guys doing today? Today I wanted to talk to you about electric shaver maintenance. You see I've got my electric shaver here, well one of them. This one's the Noralco 5810XL. You can see different views of it. It's a standard three head rechargeable cordless shaver. It doesn't use a power supply cord right into the wall with no um, no, CA, no AC adapter or transformer at all involved. It's all done internally. And that's probably the weakest part of these whole things. The batteries wear out after time and don't hold a charge very long. But on the other hand, the nice thing about these older Norelcos is that you can still use them as a corded shaver even if the battery goes dead or they're not charged up. You just plug the cord in, turn it on, and you can use it just like a regular corded shaver which I've always thought is real nice. But somewhere back in time, maybe four or five years ago, I'm not sure exactly when, they decided that that wasn't safe anymore. People were taking them, supposedly, into showers while they were plugged in and getting electrocuted by the cord. So, which really sounds stupid to me, but hey, you can't underestimate what people are going to do with things. But I never had any interest in shaving in the shower anyway. It seems kind of silly to me, but I guess apparently some people like to do it. So what I'm going to show you a little bit about maintenance and repair on these and what you can and can't do, what you shouldn't do to keep one of these up and going, even though I say this one's probably 20 years old or maybe a little more. But um, the main problem with it, I said, other than having a weak battery, is that, and that's why I first thought, well, I could buy the batteries. They have generic aftermarket batteries on eBay. It's going to cost you about you know, 7 to $10 to get a new battery pack for it. And it has to be soldered in, so you have to take it apart and solder in the connections on the new battery pack. Which, yeah, here's my problem. So if you look real close at the cutting hedge, you can see that the this one there is good, that one there is good. But see all those black spots on that one? Those are actually holes or missing teeth, not teeth, but missing, missing slots of the screen. The teeth are behind that shaving screen, I guess you'd call it. And... The screen is actually broken, damaged, missing a lot of the teeth. And what happens is that digs and bites into your skin and into the hair follicles, and it's very uncomfortable. It causes the shaver to jam up and work even harder, and hard on the blade behind there. Plus, once one of them goes, it seems like other ones start going even faster. I had like two broken, I noticed, and then within a couple of weeks of using it, it went from two to like seven, and now there's probably 20 or 22 of them that are broken in there. So. You know, you've got choices. You can repair the screens. Um, where's my new screens here? Hang on. I went on eBay and I looked, and a new Norelco brand head replacement blades and screen heads ran about twenty to thirty dollars. Some of them were even more for the genuine Norelco brand right from the factory. So, but I went and I found these here replacement ones on eBay from China. I think it was three fifty for the whole set. All three foil heads and all three blades. So here's what you get. You get three heads and three blades, which seem to be stuck in there right now. And you can see the blades are like that, pretty similar to the ones that were in it originally. And the head assembly is also very similar to what was in there originally. All right, we've got it apart now. I want to show you the inside. There are two screws. One of them is hidden. One of them I showed you is down here at the base. The other one's actually hidden beneath the power button when you slide the, or not the power button, the uh, trimmer activation slide. When you slide that open, it reveals the second screw under there. So, all right. It's actually surprisingly clean inside. So we're gonna show you right now. There's not much to it. There's where your power goes in here. And then there's a printed circuit board underneath, which controls the charging of the battery, no doubt. As you can see, this one is a single volt, 1.2 volt battery, I guess it is. Single 1.2 volt battery. I don't even tell us it's made um, December or June of 03. So actually, this is about 15 years old. I was a little bit rough on how old it was. But I don't know if we can focus on it. The motor assembly area, the back of the motor is right here. Right there. And the motor goes forward underneath this little foam. But there's the electric motor right there. It is very clean inside, so... I don't think there's anything inside here that's causing us, debris or dirt-wise, to have any problems. And the battery I talked about replacing is there, and each end of it is actually soldered to the circuit board 
there, and if we can get a good look at it, there. Yeah, we can't get a good focus on the solder joint, but you know, unless you're really good at soldering, I would not advise you to try and solder in a new battery yourself on this because I think you would be uh, putting yourself in for a lot of extra work and trouble trying to make that work if you're not really good at soldering. And the other thing is, these can be purchased on eBay for 12 to 15 dollars, 15 to 20 dollars in good use condition. And you can actually find a nice brand new triple headed shaver, Norelco brand, on eBay in the $15 to $20 range, including shipping. So, you know, there's really no reason to spend a lot of time or effort keeping one of these going beyond basic cleaning, which I showed you on the head part, um, lubrication, and possibly replacing these cutter heads here. Because it's so much less expensive to just replace the whole thing. Especially if you can find an older model, like I did, that still has the corded cutting option. I replaced mine with this slightly newer version here. This is a Norelco model 495B, and this is a triple head also, very similar setup. A little bit different blades on the inside, but it's almost the same setup. It's a floating head system with three flexible heads, and I don't think mine has the... Mine doesn't have the totally flexing heads like that, if I'm not mistaken. This is a little, yeah, this one's a little different. This has a little bit better head flex mechanism on it. The RPMs on it are way faster than my old one. And I think I got this one for $14.99, including shipping. And that was, it's brand new. Uh, it'd never been used from the looks of it. I think someone got it and they just didn't like it or didn't like electric shavers and got it for a present. But, I mean, this, this is fabulous. It cuts super smooth, very close, and the battery lasts for three or four shades without having to worry about charging it. And if you do get caught short, I say you can still plug it in and cut it like a corded razor. It is not shower safe, has a little logo even right there on the back. Do not use it when you're in the water or getting wet because it's not safe for that. But I would highly recommend picking up a lightly used or a new old stock one online rather than spending a lot of time and money trying to repair an old shaver. It just doesn't seem to be worth the time and effort involved, at least to me. But now at least I've taken one apart. I've shown you how everything works inside, and you can be the judge of whether it's worth fixing yourself or not. All right, let's finish this up, the secret here, the real behind-the-scenes truth of what you're going to do to make this project work and be happy with the results of your new blades. You can see this is running. Plugged in, left here in the on position running, and it's been running for about 15 or 20 minutes. We're going to shut it off just so we can hear better, but remember when I told you we tried it before, I was getting a substantial drain on the motor and lowered RPMs every time I would hook the blades into the on position. And I tried all the different possible combinations of new and old cutter heads and new and old blades and I just couldn't get anything to work where it didn't draw down on the motor and slow the RPMs way down. But then I got to thinking about it from a mechanical point of view. You know, I am a former mechanic. I still consider myself a mechanic. I worked in the small engine business for like six years doing small engine repair and maintenance. I've been a car repair hobbyist for the last 20 years. And I've ground valves before on engines and other machined parts. And I thought to myself, well, these blades are a very finely machined piece of steel. And the foil covers here on top are also, you know, finely and classically machined kind of pieces. I said, you know, those two machined pieces are now spinning together at a high speed. And they're developing friction which is probably what's causing the motor to slow down, is that extra friction. And anytime we put a new set of valves in a motor, we always, what we call, lap the valves in. Lapping the valves in is a simulation of the wear that would take place into a motor over time as the parts get used to rubbing up against each other and wear into a certain position. And the valves in a motor are artificially spun around with some grinding compound on them, to make them fit into a nice groove and solid position where they contact fully with the cylinder head. And I'm thinking to myself, well, 
perhaps that's the problem here. These blades haven't wore down enough to match the cutter foil surface that they're rubbing on and that they just need to be ran for a while until they're properly worn into the right position. So what I did is I dropped one drop of cooking oil into each of the cutter heads just to lubricate it and disperse the heat because I knew I was going to let it run for a while. So one drop of cutting or vegetable oil on each of the heads and I turned it on and I said I let it run for 20 minutes. I stopped it, I wiped it off real good and cleaned it and then started again let it run for a little bit while longer and now if we listen to it cut it has a really nice higher RPM sound to it. I can put my fingers on uh, blades. I don't feel anywhere near the amount of vibration and just roughness I felt before whenever I touched the cutter heads. So if you listen closely and release it, you shouldn't hear too much of an increase in the RPMs of the motor now. A little bit. I can hear a little bit. But it's really not that much different. Before it was a real severe slowdown of the motors. And I also did a test shave of myself with this new condition here. We'll do it again. And you can hear, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but the the motor is not slowing down at all as I go over different parts of my face. And there's no pull or stretching sensation in my whiskers. No pain as it goes through different parts. I think we've done a good job on fixing this old shaver up. Cleaned it well, replaced the cutter foil heads and the blades, let it wear into its proper position for about 15 or 20 minutes on the counter. I don't know if I would still attempt to change the battery in it or not. I think I'm still just going to use it as a plug-in model and keep my newer one for when I need a battery-powered one. But I'd say all in all it's a success. We ordered the Chinese replacement blades for about four bucks. Uh, make sure you order the right ones for your particular shaver. I think there's, I know there's at least two, possibly three different models of the replacement blades for the Norelco triple head shavers. Depending on what year it was made and when it was, you know, sold, you're going to need different models of it. So, um, thanks for watching. Oh, here I am. There I am. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Check out my other do-it-yourself channels. Save some money, fix some things yourself, you'll be happy you did. Uh, have a great day. Bye for now.